It's Brian Preston, the money guy. Let's move on to Waco's question. He says, I'm building a house and will be applying for a mortgage when complete in a couple months. Do you guys recommend me getting a five to one adjustable rate mortgage with a lower rate and hope interest rates come down in the next five years? Uh, so this this is Waco's question. <laughs> hey guys, do y'all recommend the five one and pray? <laughs> right, because that's what it is. Yeah. So for those of you that aren't familiar, uh, we talk a lot about uh, fixed mortgages here, where you have a fixed term, either a 15-year or a 30-year, and the rate that you lock in is fixed over that term. But mortgages are actually can be a lot more complicated than that. Some of them will say, hey, we're going to give you a fixed rate for five years, but then at the end of five years, we're going to start adjusting the rate, or the whole note will be due there, or we can go 10-1, or we can do 7-1. There's a lot of different types of mortgages that you can go out there and get. Now, Rates have been so low, histor- uh, rates have been so low for the past uh, five, six, seven years now that fixed rate mortgages have kind of been like the only game in town, only game in town. Well, it's no surprise that now that rates are rising and it seems like they're going to maybe even inch a little bit higher, that we're starting to see some of these products we have not seen as prevalently as we have in the past, some of these adjustable rate products. Now, our view is not that those products are necessarily bad. However, there are some risks associated with them, and boy, you better understand the risks before you jump right in. I mean, you got to know your why. I mean, how long you're going to be there. If if this is a house, say you're in the military and you know they're going to relocate you in four years, um, then then maybe a five-year works. But if there's a chance, and maybe, hey, look, I'll even say maybe a seven-year, because they make seven-one products, they yep. make ten-one products. So you have to just say, is there a short, is there a product? But I have to know. I have to just have to know. Don't mislead yourself. Be honest with yourself. You have to know if you're truly going to be moving and need a different house in that period of time, because there is a chance um, that if you think this is a, that, that you're going to be in this area for the next 12 years, you know, 10 years, you know, just say whatever the number is, then I would probably go with a more fixed mortgage. And let me tell you why, is that I'm, I'm, I've done this enough to where I've had variable products. I had one of those things. You don't see them anymore. They're not out in the wild because it's what led to the Great Recession. I had an interest-only loan <laughs> oh. on my oh. second house initially because Lord knows why they gave me that mortgage on that. I, I am I'm one of those lucky people they took advantage of the, that. Basically, you didn't have to underwrite back in the the two thousand. What led to the the, the the Great Recession of two thousand eight was you didn't have to to do any. You, you didn't have to pulse. verify your income. They actually called them stated income loans. Mm-hmm. Get, get this: it was stated income where there was no verification. They would just say, "Tell us what your income is, and then we'll give you a mortgage on what could go wrong." I mean, <laughs> if you look back on it now, but they were doing stated income because I just started a business. Think about that: I started a business in 2002, bought a house in 2003. What? You're not supposed to be able to do <laughs> that. They don't, they, they, see, you're see, self-employed. You should be like able to get a mortgage. A, there was a kid happening sometime around so, there. Yeah, I had uh, a baby in 2003 too. So I mean, any type of real underwriting would be like, we're not giving a mortgage to this family. <laughs> this is insane. But fortunately, back in 2008, they were giving you drive buying your car, roll down the window, they throw a mortgage in there, and you know, and they're like, hey, good luck, you'll be all right. <laughs> and uh, you know, so I've had an interest-only variable product, um, and then I've had 15-year mortgages. I've had 30 year mortgages. I've had, you know, several houses as we're moving and, and upgrading and so forth. And I can tell you on that, on that, the reason why they were, the bank was fortunate, that even though they shouldn't have given me that loan, they gave it to the right person, um, where I'm scared. You mm-hmm. know, I, I was going to pay that loan back. And, um, and so I was scared to death while I had that variable mortgage the entire time I had it. And I was so thankful when I refinanced that thing away into a 15 year um, I think I refinanced it at 4.75, uh-huh. um, 15 year, and I thought that was a steal at the time. Um, but it, it is one of those things where I like fixed mortgages better than I like that adjustability, just because it, I, I was talking to one of our our, our head, pl- you know, one of our primary planners, um, and he just got a house. And it, it, anybody who works with him, you'll know who I'm talking about. Um, and I, I said, "How do you feel?" And he goes, "I just glad I don't have to worry." about what's going on with inflation yeah. anymore. I own my house, and I can be happy in my house. I can build a family. I can build roots in the, with this house. 
And that's what a house is supposed to yep. do. It's supposed to be shelter. It's supposed to be a place for you to live. And if you're constantly worrying, are the variables and the rules going to keep changing on me? That's why I don't. But like I said, I have to put that asterisk in there because maybe somebody is moving in five years and they should do that variable mortgage. But for most of us who are going to be in a house for, because you're going to be in a house, you don't need to do real estate transactions unless you can be in there five to seven mm-hmm. years anyway, because there's a lot of friction costs between all the hands in the pot um, and all the, the underwriting and all the, the, the attorneys and the appraisals and all the inspections. You, you'd better be in that thing for a long time anyway. Um, so that pushes it more towards the, the needle ends up on a fixed rate mortgage. You need to do your poo-poo plan, right? You need to assume, what if I do this 5-1, and when it's time for that n- note to adjust or when that note balloons, what if interest rates aren't lower? What if I can't refi? Is that a better risk for you to assume than maybe locking in a higher rate fixed mortgage right now? Because guess what? Even if you lock in a higher rate fixed mortgage right now, and four years from now interest rates drop, guess what you can do? You can then still refinance. It just limits some of your exposure. Now, there's probably going to be a cost to that. There's going to be an interest rate differential that you can calculate that difference in cost, but you got to weigh those risks before you make a decision like that to understand, okay, what is my worst case scenario? Because how do you not want to be swimming when the tide goes out, Brian? Oh, man, you do not want to be swimming naked. He wanted to get me to say naked one more time. <laughs> there you go. For all you, you bingo to. players, skinny dipping, naked, whatever term they put on that bingo card. Ding, ding, ding. You win. <laughs>